morning. We have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five boats and two cars and a lot of people and a lot of people online. So hi, let, hey, everyone in person say hi to our online friends. Hi. Hey. Good, good. Um, if you are online, we're glad you're with us and y'all can participate by chiming in and um, letting us know what you did this weekend. So um, we'd love to hear from you, and I can't wait to get online and see what everyone from our online congregation did this weekend. Um, I have some announcements. First is there's a church conference this, thir this Tuesday coming up. Um, members should have information about that and the details of how that church conference should all work, but just wanted to remind you of that. Um, after the service today, we have Sunday school. So there's adult Sunday school um, right here, and there's kids Sunday school just a little bit down the road on and under the pavilion. And so hope to see kids and adults at Sunday school in a little bit. Um, there's a thankful pumpkin. We did this last year as well, but it's so good to remember what all we're thankful for during this time, um, especially during this this season in, in our lives um, of of this pandemic, um, it's good to keep our our thankfulness in mind and know all the blessings that God gives us and be mindful of that and, and raise that up to God and give thanks to God. So um, there's a pumpkin and there are Sharpies and feel free to fill out the pumpkin in a nice neat little row and um, we should have, by the end of um, a few weeks, we should have a beautiful pumpkin um, filled up with Thanksgiving. Also, I um, want to re remind you to invite others. I've talked to many who are here today at church, and they're saying, um, I'm so glad this is here, because I wouldn't have been able to go to, a, go to you know, church otherwise, or I have, I'm so glad this is here, because this is a place that I feel safe to worship, and that sort of thing. And so what a great opportunity this is to invite folks to church, to invite folks to worship with us, 
and um, praise God together out in God's beautiful creation. If you love being here, then I'll bet that your friends and family love being here as well. Um, and, and let them know that there's a place if you are, um, it's hard to get around for you. Um, let them know that you can just drive your car up. Um, let them know if they have a boat that you can just drive your boat up or, or sit um, spread out or um, all of those things. Um, so, so please extend the invitation to others. We have a video that can help you um, spread the word on social media for that as well. Today is Holy Communion, and we'll talk more about that in a bit. But um, it's actually World Communion Sunday. So it's a great, it's a big deal in, in the church because people all over the world are celebrating Holy Communion together. So I want to remind you if um, you need a, we have little communion packs. And um, that's the safest way we found to do it. And um, actually, a lot of churches, that the people that make the communion packs, I'm sure they hadn't made too many in the past, but they're probably, the, the communion pack factory is probably going on <laughs> on extra these days. Um, in fact, we, we asked for the, the red ones, and they sent us the white ones because they said all the churches have taken up the red ones. Um, and many people have run out. But, so we're, we're glad to have those. And, and those are at the table as you first walk in. And so if you didn't know what that was, that was Holy Communion. And if you forgot, go back and, and get one. Or, or if you're on a boat, um, let the ushers know when they come around with the offering. And they can make sure that you get um, some Holy Communion as well when we do that later in the service. Um, all right. And I think those are all of our announcements. Oh, and if you are at home, make sure that you prepare for Holy Communion as well. Um, I will bless the elements and we will pray over those. And so um, those are just as holy as, as it is if you are in person. And so get a cracker or a piece of bread or some, from some juice, anything that most kind of resembles Holy Communion at your home. And get that ready for later on in the service. Let's go to God in prayer. Precious Lord Jesus, we come to you and we are grateful to be in your presence. We're grateful to be with one another, worshiping you, remembering why it is that we follow you and learning how to follow ever closely in your footsteps, O oh Lord. We remember you and the ways that you lived your life for us. We remember you and the ways that you send us out into this world to be your disciples, to make your disi make disciples for you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Almighty God, from the ends of the earth, you have gathered around Christ's holy table. We come to feast together. Have mercy on your church, troubled and divided. Renew us and make us one. Amen. <laughs> Strangers now are friends and strangers. 
and now it's time for the children's moment. And so we're going to do something a little different today. Our theme for today is unity, how God makes all people all different ways, and that is something to celebrate. We celebrate the beautiful, wonderful ways that God makes us and how he brings us all together. So I'm going to invite Kenya to go to the microphone, and I'm going to invite, if the kids are on the shore, I know we have some kids in boats. Hi, kids in boats. <laughs> Hi. Um, if, you, if there are kids in the shore that want to come up to the uh, bench that is in front of Kenya, she's going to read you some of a book. What better way to, to talk about unity than Big Bird? And so if you want to hear from Big Bird, um, go sit on the bench in front of Kenya so you can see the pictures better. Go for it, Kins. <clears throat> Our eyes are different. Our eyes are the same. They see, they blink, they weep, they wink. Our bodies are different. Our bodies are the same. They stretch and bend and work and play. They all need food and rest each day. They dance and wriggle and ride a bike. They might look different, but they're alike. Our feelings are the same. Our feelings are the same. Lonely, worried, scared, excited, happy, loving, glad, delighted. We're the same, we're different. That's what makes us the world such fun. Many kinds of people, not just one. A rainbow would be boring if there were only green and blue. What makes a rainbow beautiful is that it has every hue. So aren't you glad you look like you? We're the different, we're the same. We're wonderful. All right, and let's say a prayer for our children's moment. Let, this is a repeat after me prayer. Dear God, thank you for my church. Thank you for my family. Thank you for the beautiful rainbow you make when we see one another. Help us to love one another. Amen. The litany for justice and unity. God and Spirit, revealed in Jesus Christ, calls us by grace to be renewed in the image of our Creator, that we may be in one divine love for the world. Today is the day God cares for the integrity of creation, wills the healing and wholeness of all life, weeps at the plunder of earth's goodness. And so, so shall we. Today is the day God embraces all hues of humanity, delights in diversity and difference, favors solidarity, transforming strangers into friends. And, and so, so shall we. Today is the day God cries with the masses of starving people, despises growing disparity between rich and poor, demands justice for workers in the marketplace. And so shall we. Today is the day God deplores violence in our homes and streets, rebukes the world's warring madness, humbles the powerful, and lifts up the lowly. And so shall we. 
Today is the day God calls for nations and peoples to live in peace, celebrates where justice and mercy embrace, exalts the wolf, grazes with the lamb, and so shall we. Today is the day God brings good news to the poor, proclaims release to the captives, gives sight to the blind, and sets the oppressed free. And so shall we. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. He says of himself, If anyone else thinks he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. I was circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee. As for zeal, persecuting the church, as for legalistic righteousness, faultless. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already obtained all this, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now it's time for the offering. <laughs> so um, I just want to thank you for being faithful to uh, St. John and all of this varying ministries. Uh, they've become more varying in 2020. Um, and we are grateful for your continued work in, um, in giving and participating in, in the mighty work of, of God in the church and in the community and around the world. Let's go to God in prayer. Oh, Lord, I pray your blessings upon these offerings. Lord, we have worked hard for this money, and we know all the different places it might go to make our lives better. But Lord, we go, and we serve, and we give to make life better for the kingdom. And Lord, we trust in your kingdom. We trust in your goodness, and we know that your kingdom is rich. Your kingdom is abundant. There is no end. And we trust that this money will go towards that to make lives more rich to make our world more rich, to make the ministries at St. John a place that we can reach out to others in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
It might be a little rocky, so <laughs> so stand as you're able, please. Uh, our script, our gospel reading is Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 through 46. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he rented it to the tenant farmers and took a trip. When it was time for the harvest, he sent his servants to the tenant farmers to collect his fruit. But the tenant farmers grabbed his servants. They beat some of them, and some of them they killed. Some of them they stoned to death. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first group. They treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenant farmers saw the son, they said to each other, this is the heir. Come on, let's kill him and we'll, get his, we'll have his inheritance. They grabbed him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. When the owner of the vineyard comes, what will they do to those tenant farmers? They said he will totally destroy those wicked farmers and rent the vineyard to other tenant farmers who will give him the fruit when it's ready. Jesus said to them, Haven't you ever read in the scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it's amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you that God's kingdom will, will be taken away from you and will be given to a people who produce its fruit. Whoever falls on the stone will be crushed, and the stone will crush the person who falls on it. Now when the chief priests and the Pharisees heard the parable, they knew what Jesus was, that Jesus was talking about them. They were trying to arrest him. But they feared the crowds who thought he was a prophet. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And let us pray. Oh Lord, open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts to your word. Amen. I've probably told you before, if you've heard me preach before, that my favorite image of the kingdom of God, if I like to sit and picture what exactly the kingdom of God looks like, because Jesus gives us plenty images of the kingdom of God, my, my, the first image that comes to mind is a table. And it's a table that has no end. It goes on and on forever. 
and people sitting around the table all look different. They've, they've all been invited. They're all important. They're all loved. They all speak different languages. Some are big, some are little. They all take home different paychecks. They all have different types of clothes. Some are babies, some are in their 90s. And there is plenty of food on that table to go around. There will never be a shortage of food at that table. Around the table there is laughter, there is joy. Can you picture it? I can't help but picture that beautiful image of the never-ending table, that feast, on World Communion Sunday. I picture people in all parts of the world, in every continent, remembering Jesus. Remembering Jesus' life and death and resurrection and call for our lives. It's the day when people all over the world acknowledge that it's not just about us. It's about diversity and unity and experiences that the love of Christ bonds us all together. Today on this World Communion Sunday, Jesus calls us to the table. And life around that beautiful heavenly banquet means that we are one. We are together. We bear fruit together. And we press on together. First, we are one. Have you ever felt like you don't belong somewhere? Have you ever looked around and thought, how did I get here? Why am I here? And I am not a part of this. <laughs> Have you ever been maybe underdressed at a super fancy restaurant? Or have you um, accidentally worn the other team's colors to a sporting event? I don't know much about sports. Uh, I was a youth minister and I showed up. Uh, there were rival teams and I had kids from at my church from the youth group on the uh, Cass team, high school team, and the Cartersville high school team. And they were playing each other and I accidentally wore, I think it was the Cass colors, but I was sitting on the Cartersville side. <laughs> and so... <laughs> So I kind of started to wander around and, and, and the kids were like, you are wearing the wrong color. I felt like I didn't belong on that Cartersville side. Or I had a friend in college who was Japanese and I went to his house and saw his family and they all spoke Japanese and I felt like I did not belong because I had no clue what they were saying. And so they would have full conversations and I would even try and guess what they were talking about. but. The Japanese language isn't even similar to, to English, kind of like Spanish. You can kind of pick out some words, but I just started to tune them out. And then by the time they switched back to English, I had no clue that they were talking to me at that point. And so, and so I just completely tuned them out altogether. I felt that way in just one circumstance. But imagine feeling that way daily. Imagine feeling like you are not welcome in the places that you go. Church, work, school. Hear the words of the poem by Jan Richardson when she talks about the table and how everybody is welcome. And the table will be wide and the welcome will be wide and the arms will open wide to gather us in and our hearts will open wide to receive. And we will come as children who trust there is enough. And we will come unhindered and free. And our aching will be met with bread. And our sorrow will be met with wine. And we will open our hands to the feast without shame. And we will turn toward each other without fear. And we will give up our appetite for despair. And we will taste and know of delight. And we will become bread for a hungering world. And we will become drink for those who thirst, and the blessed will become the blessing, and everywhere will be the feast. Today we celebrate the beauty and diversity in the world around us, and though we're different, we pray to God, make us one. With all of our differences, visible and invisible, we trust and know that God 
is in fact making us one. As we are in ministry to all the world, we bear fruit. So that's the second thing I want us to know today is that life around the table means we bear fruit. This morning we read the parable of the vineyard and it's quite a tricky parable. It's not quite as easy as like the parable of the mustard seed where you obviously know what's happening. Jesus says so many things at one time without saying much at all in this, this parable. The landowner built a hedge of protection and he prepared the soil and he built a press and a watchtower and those tenants came and they ruined everything. In our broken world, we should be prepared for people to try and hinder the reign of Christ, rejecting Jesus, rejecting the least of these. And when they do, God will always be victorious. But the point of the parable isn't revenge or what goes around comes around. Those Pharisees wanted it to be about that. But Jesus wants more for us. He wants us to go back to the vineyard. The soil is ready. Work in the fields and care for the vines and prune off anything that hinders growth. But most of all, bear fruit. Don't be distracted by things like greed, jealousy, or lack of trust. One challenge that you can give yourself in day-to-day -day life is, how am I bearing fruit for the kingdom? You can ask yourself that every day. It's one of the questions the early Methodists would ask one another with the founder of the Methodist movement, John Wesley. At the end of the day, get together with maybe your spouse or a child or a parent or a friend and talk about how each of you bore fruit that day. If you don't know how you bore fruit in that day, maybe your partner that you speak with knows and they can help you figure it out and you can help them figure it out. It's kind of a hard habit to get into as, as is any habit. But when we bear fruit and we look for the fruit that we bear, we can see growth and others can see it too. Fruit means words that build up. Maybe new programs or ministries that help others. Maybe doing something for others instead of yourself. Maybe talking to others about your faith. All of those are signs of the fruit that you bear. There are many ways to bear fruit. And once you start to recognize it, you'll see it more often. It's not easy, but we press on which is our third thing to do around the table. Press on. When we're heartbroken by the violence, the fighting, the injustice, the virus, we press on. We don't excuse ourselves from the table. We don't wish somebody else away from the table that makes us uncomfortable, however tempting that might be sometimes, but we press on. I don't have a story or a poem to go with this, with this third point because I was so moved after reading Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. It says, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached my goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus made me his own. Christ Jesus has made you his own. Think about that. Think about what that means for you, that Christ Jesus loves you, cares for you, sees you, and knows that you are beautiful, precious, unique. You are a child of God, and Christ Jesus has made you his own. Today we gather grieving because we so desire to gather at the table, but we know that there have been barriers. We often put up barriers between ourselves and others. We build up walls that stop us from experiencing God's bountiful provision for us. We perpetuate disharmony, complaining about one another. We confess our sins, 
This is the time to do so when we gather at the table, trusting in God's amazing grace. Why? Because Christ Jesus has made us his own. We let the peace of Christ rule in us. Today, we see the bounty. We see what God has provided for us. It's right here in front of us, and it's all around us. It's all over the world. The Methodist Church practices an open table because there's no limits or barriers in God's table. Anyone can receive the bread and juice if you so desire. And did you know that in the Methodist Church, if you, our, our table is so open that if you offer Holy Communion to one person, you have to offer it to everyone in attendance. We see that in weddings. Sometimes a bride and groom comes to, to the pastor and, and they say, well, I want to do Holy Communion at my wedding, but I, I, you know, it takes too long to serve it to the rest of the people. And I just want to do it for, for the bride and the groom. And, and we Methodist clergy have to say, no, we, if you are going to do Holy Communion, it must be open to everyone in attendance. We see the way that Christ has invited all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace in even the ways that we practice communion. Today we experience the fruit of the vine and the wheat of the field. And now in these days, um, we experience that in the form of these self-serve <laughs> pre-packaged communion packets that I hope all of you have with you and they're, they're white grape juice instead of red because of the back order thing but that's okay that is okay it is still holy communion and so as one in our beautiful diversity we seek to live lives bearing fruit and we press on with the holy feast that is before us let us pray almighty god We cry out to you, make us one. We pray that we might see our brothers and sisters through your eyes. We pray that we might recognize the lives, the cultures, the experiences of those around the world and celebrate the beauty that you have made in your creation. Help us to bear fruit in our lives and help us, O oh Lord, to press on even when times get hard. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And if you turn in your bulletin to our great Thanksgiving, like to invite you to read along. The Lord be with you. We lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one every nation and people to live on the face of all the earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He commissioned us to be witnesses to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. And today his family and all the world is joining at his holy table. On the night which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to, the, to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body of the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout the world and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name by your spirit. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. This is the blood of Christ poured out for you. Thanks be to God. The table is set. You have your elements. I invite you to prayerfully receive these elements, giving thanks to God and recognizing your place in this beautiful, diverse, world that you belong in.
have gathered, we have celebrated a holy feast with one another. Now go into this world as ones who have been claimed by Christ Jesus. Go into this world and share the love of, and grace with those around you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.